We've got more of our exclusive conversation with First Lady, that's Dr. Jill Biden. Yesterday, she hosted a ceremony at the White House to celebrate the National Teachers of the Year for 2020 and 2021. So we sat down with her and four of the nation's top teachers before the ceremony began. Juliana Ertube was there. Tabitha Rossboy was there. She's the one that had on that cape that we were talking about earlier. John Arthur was there, and so was Chris Deere. These guys were sensational, all of them. Dr. Biden, as you know, is a teacher, and like many other educators, she returned to the classroom this fall, too. We asked them about their experiences teaching during the pandemic. What does it mean to be a teacher in 2020 and 2021? You know, because when I was growing up, I never thought of teaching as a dangerous job. I never really even thought of it as a stressful job. You know, the teachers just seem to do everything and have everything under control. Yeah. What has this been like for you all? It's been a scary time, you know? It's not only dangerous in terms of our health, it's a little bit precarious due to the political situation we find ourselves in where you have folks showing up at school board meetings, very upset. And as a teacher, and as a parent myself, mm -hmm. and as just a member of my community, I, I feel all these mixed emotions because I see folks who are upset. I just want to embrace them and say, we're all in this together. Were all of your schools hit particularly hard by COVID? My school was hit particularly mm -hmm. hard. I, I teach in New Orleans, and the Delta mm -hmm. variant there really mm -hmm. ravaged the, the city. Uh, in many ways, it did show just how much a community can come together and persevere. And we did see that uh, transition into the classroom as well. We saw a lot of students do everything that they can during the pandemic to, to stay afloat. How do we say to kids things are gonna be okay when you see parents being so divided and so polarized about something that seems to be very simple as wearing a mask? Mm. And what are your thoughts as you look and you see parents so divided about this issue? Who wants to weigh in on that? I'll weigh in. I think what teachers always do is we create community within our classrooms. Mm -hmm. And with that comes collective wellness. Right. I'm a better student if the person next to me is learning and is having their needs fulfilled and they know how to advocate for their needs. And I remember when one little boy told me, yeah, I wear my mask to keep my friends safe. Yeah. yeah. So when, when you explain it to kids, they really they do get understand. They do get yeah. it. And yes. they feel proud, yes. you know, yes. to be able to do their part. And I mm -hmm. think that we underestimate the importance of acknowledging people doing their part. Mm -hmm. For me, it's all about empathizing without compromising, yes. yeah. you know. Um, I had a student who was in my class last year and she remained online even after other students came back because she had a father with pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. And just this past week, he passed of COVID mm. and they did everything right. Mm -hmm. And as long as we can humanize our conversations mm -hmm. and our dialogue as much as possible, make sure that we're bringing it back to reminding everyone this is a human issue and we're just trying to take care of people. We're trying to mm -hmm. teach your kids, trying to give them a brighter future while also protecting them today. And I, I haven't had a parent yet who didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should just be fighting the virus, mm -hmm. not one another, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> This pandemic is, it, it is, is another thing um, that, that has made our job become political somehow. In the way that much of our lives are political, I think education is specifically subject um, to the lawmakers that represent us, right? The conditions of our workplace are directly affected by decisions that happen near the White House. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that teachers get really frustrated when new things pop up, but I always say to them, we can handle this because we've always been handling it. You know what I say? Your president understands because there's a teacher in the White House. Yes, <laughs> yes. You certainly have his ear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what is your message to him? Well, I think I go home every single day and tell him about my students, about teachers, about what we're facing in our classrooms. And the thing I love about Joe is he listens, and he has listened. And look at the American Rescue Plan, and look at all the money he gave to schools and, mm -hmm. and for uh, social development and mental health, uh, things that are really important to teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew he would be a great education president, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons I was out there campaigning my yeah. heart out. <laughs> well, well, the teachers who are sitting here, what, what frustrations do you have? The nature of teaching has somewhat changed. We are taking on many more roles than, mm -hmm. than before. There are students who need, you know, mental health services or who might mm -hmm. um, be lacking with their social-emotional development because of the pandemic, and we have to be 
uh, in some ways, counselors. I teach in a school in the most beautiful community, shout out Metal Arc Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. a lot of the kids did not have access to the kinds of privileges that my children mm -hmm. will have access yes. to. Mm -hmm. and, and making sure that I was not failing as a teacher at the same time I was trying to not fail as a father was difficult to, to go to bed with every night. And, and it filled me with guilt. Teacher guilt has been around mm -hmm. since as long as there have been teachers. Teacher guilt. Teacher guilt, that, huh. that feeling like I'm not doing enough. Yeah. And we are carrying all of the pre-pandemic weight on our shoulders mm -hmm. and then all of this new stuff. And you know, in a lot of ways we're stronger, we can bear more weight than we could before. Mm -hmm. Dr. Biden, what has frustrated you during this time, during this pandemic? Well, I guess, you know, not being able to be in the classroom like everybody yeah. else, to see our students in person. Do you ever come home and you say, you know, it was a really tough day, dear, honey. What, what do you call him? <laughs> you don't Just call Joe. Joe. Okay, Joe. Yeah, no, Joe, this, no, it's no, very no, difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Well, you can call him Joe. Yeah. Um, mm. It's very difficult. It would be very helpful if you would fill in the blank. Mm. Make sure that we have broadband across America mm. so that Thank all you. students have access yes. to technology. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that it, it guys? a game changer for Nevada. We, in the fall, there was a public and private organization that came together to ensure every single child in our state had a laptop and a Wi-Fi hotspot. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we, we, we see the problems, but clearly, all of you sitting here, Dr. Biden included, still love your jobs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You still love teaching. <laughs> yeah, we do. You know, it's, it's the students. I really love the getting in there every single day, uh, planning these lessons and seeing those light bulbs go off and seeing them enjoying the classroom and uh, enjoying just being present. As a teacher, I've always kind of seen that I can come and be that warm, friendly face to Latino mm -hmm. families who are first generation like me. Mm -hmm. You know, we can share stories that are similar and we can really, you know, come together on what do you need? What do you want from the school? I love teaching because I'm able to give students confidence. Mm -hmm. If I can give them the confidence to believe in themselves, then I, you know, I hopefully have given them a gift. So true. Children are the best people. Teaching is the best job and there's no better way to spend a day than in a classroom with kids. I love teaching because I can empower not only my students, but their families and my community, and I can make a difference. It's a job unlike any other. It is rewarding even when it's challenging, and it is totally worth every moment of investment that you give. May we all feel that about our jobs. We thank you, Tabitha, John, Chris and Juliana and of course Dr. Biden because it's clear their passion for the job and their frustration for the job too. It was, it was interesting when we asked Dr. Biden, you know, what do you say to your husband? I didn't know what the nickname was. I think it's more than Joe Snookums. I, I think it's more than Joe, yeah. <laughs> but she said, you know, I call him Joe, but she definitely has, you know, ongoing and continued conversations because she's just as frustrated as all the teachers who are out there really doing yeoman's work. Yeah. Yeah, the first lady, time. she definitely has uh, an educator's spirit. Yes, you can tell. very but much speaking so. Speaking of spirit, I would just encourage parents who might be dealing with difficult issues surrounding everything that we're dealing with, uh, just going to the school and asking the teacher, how are you doing? Yeah. Because there is a very lot of weight point. on their shoulders. Very good and point. just a simple question of truly asking them how their spirit is, that goes a long way. Very good point. Yeah. You know what they all said? That we can all... Teachers, students, parents can all give each other more grace. That's yeah. something that's missing these days. We're so busy yeah, 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 at each other, we could all give each other more grace because we're well all said. dealing with a lot. No well doubt said. about it.